Trump has just been impeached for a second time. The world is in chaos. Censorship is happening left and right and all over the internet. And you know what the staff at Politico are concerned with? That their publication published Ben Shapiro. Yes, because this is all that they have time for. Now, I specifically here have an article pulled up from the Daily Beast simply because I think it's going to provide the most absolute comedic value to this situation. I'm going to be full disclosure. I have not read what Ben Shapiro wrote in Politico. I don't really care what Ben Shapiro wrote in Politico. What I care about is the uproar over the fact that the staff at Politico, who in theory are supposed to be journalists on some level, are having a hissy fit and a meltdown over the fact that they dared to publish Ben Shapiro, which it shows you everything that you need to know about the media, doesn't it? It it shows you not only that they are children who can't handle it when someone disagrees with them, even when that someone has been a pretty ardent critic of Trump for basically the entire time he's been in office. I mean, there's some things he does that Trump has done that he's liked. There's a lot that Trump has done that he has not liked, but he's he, he's been very balanced. He hasn't been like rah-rah Trump for, by any stretch of the imagination. But what this shows us is that these people, and by these people, I mean people on the left, particularly the media class that, that are out to censor and deplatform everyone they disagree with, these people perceive the media to be theirs. And how dare someone on the right encroach into their territory? Let's see how the Daily Beast covered this situation. Mischief making. Politico boss defends handing playbook over to right wing bomb thrower Ben Shapiro. Several staffers expressed dismay over handing the keys of the outlet's influential newsletter product to a pundit with a Long history of bigoted and incendiary commentary. Keep in mind, Ben Shapiro is Jewish. Let's just keep in mind as we read this article. Politico is facing backlash on Thursdays, both internally and externally, for its handing over the keys to its signature news product for one day to Ben Shapiro, an an often incendiary right-wing commentator. We published a piece by a very prominent writer, provocateur, and po- if you want to call Ben Shapiro a provocateur, if you're honestly going to make the argument that Ben Shapiro is a provocateur, like, what are you reading in your daily life? Honestly, the guy is so boring at the end of the day. I even don't even listen to him and watch him that much anymore simply because I, I find him, I'm going to be honest, I know news should probably shouldn't be entertainment, but I find him to be very boring. You want a provocateur? You need to look at other places that are not Ben Shapiro. We stand by every word in there. It was very closely edited. The outlet's top editor, Matt, says as part of his response to staffers during a Thursday meeting. To another point, the top editor added, mischief making has always been a part of Politico's secret sauce. We are an upstart. Some of that sensibility is going to be part of the publication. And and they're, they want to be this like this edgy upstart, but their staff literally cannot handle Ben Shapiro writing a flipping article. Over the past several weeks, Politico has filled the temporary editorial vacancy atop the playbook by inviting high-profile political reporters and commentators to author playbook, the highly influential morning political newsletter and tip sheet for Beltway insiders. The playbook has been authored by blah, 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 whatever, whatever. But on Thursday, Politico turned the newsletter over to Shapiro, who used the space for a column making the case that House Republicans who voted against impeaching Trump, despite his repeated lies of the 2020 blah, 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 are right to feel aggrieved. If you support Trump in any way, you were at least partially culpable, the argument goes. It's not just Trump who deserves vitriol. It's the whole, it's all the 74 million people who voted for him, Shapiro wrote, further claiming... Opposition to impeachment comes from a deep and abiding conservative belief that members of the opposing political tribe want their destruction, not simply to punish Trump for his behavior. Shapiro's guest appearance was not particularly well received. Internally at Politico, several staff members raised concerns about the decision to allow him to guest write the Keys newsletter even for one day. These people can literally not handle 
someone that they disagree with writing a newsletter. Let's just think for a moment about the overall lack of resiliency that it takes where you can't handle someone that you disagree with writing a newsletter. One staffer pointed out in the company-wide Slack channel that the right-wing pundit has a long history of bigoted and incendiary commentary, making it especially inappropriate to elevate him in the wake of last week's violent attack on the Capitol by rioters who critics say have been radicalized for years by the fiery rhetoric of right-wing media stars like Shapiro. Now, never mind for a second that Ben Shapiro has actually been one of the most level-headed voices since the election, saying... If there's proof, then it's going to change things. If there's not proof, it's not going to change things. Like, he was not in favor of the path that Trump took. But does that matter in the land of the media where everyone are left-wing, progressive, crazy people children? No, no, doesn't matter at all. It was clearly generated a wave of negative attention. I fear it's over already overshadowing a lot of the great work being done by journalists across the newsroom the staffer added the comment received several dozen upvotes from political call these people are so elitist i swear to god it's like they they don't want anyone that doesn't think like them and act like them and write for the publications they approve of no one is allowed to have an opinion unless it's the opinion that they approve of ha 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 silly peasants you think you can come and play with us ha 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 it is especially confusing, given the newsroom welcome efforts over the last year to cover issues related to race in a more intentional, elevated, and thoughtful way. Another staffer responded, Ben Shapiro is Jewish. He's Jewish. Obviously Jewish. Overtly Jewish. Not even covertly Jewish. Overtly Jewish. Outside the Beltway-centric outlet, reporters and communists alike voiced anger and disappointment with Politico's decision, all noting Shapiro's long career in divisive and toxic rhetoric about the LGBT community, Muslims, Black Americans, and Jews who support Democratic politicians because no one is allowed to have an opinion that is not the one that the media elites approve of. Ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. As such, Sapiro seemed to re to revel in the online backlash to his guest, uh, guest authoring of Playbook, tweeting that critics were pretty much proving my point, so keep at it, guys. You're doing great. And you know what? Here's the thing. I've actually, I, I, I gotta admit, I was struggling quite a bit after the election. I think I was, I was very burnt out. A lot of you know that I was really thinking about just walking away from doing all of this because I was really burnt out. I was getting like an extra amount of hate online. I was just like, I was so over the whole thing. And then I don't know what happened at some point, And I, I think it's only been reinforced in the last week. At some point, it really clicked with me that invite the haters love the haters, celebrate it. Every single time you get absurd articles and tweets written about you and imposters on the internet and all this crap. Like it really, you can, you, you don't have to allow that to get to you. You can channel it and use it for something positive. And I forgot that for a minute. Usually I feel like I'm pretty good about it, but um, I, and I think that's exactly what Ben Shapiro is doing here, which is why I bring it up. Like Ben Shapiro is like, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. During a previously scheduled meeting on diversity and inclusion, Chief Editor-in-Chief Matt addressed the internal concerns, telling staff that Politico had tried to put together a stable of prominent guest authors to represent a range of perspectives. They don't want a range of perspectives represented, Matt. That is entirely the point. He put that the publication was not part of a team and that it had always very successfully managed to rise above that and not become associated with any one group. Well, Matt needs to actually have some serious conversations with his staff then because obviously what the staff is telling you in this little revolt is that they want you to, to be part of a team. They want you to take a side. And it looks as though we're going to find out more information about what's going on there because Brian Stelter tweeted politicals editor-in-chief just announced a 3 p.m. call with the newsroom, presumably, to address today's complaints. So I'm filming this video a little bit after 3 p.m. We'll see how they address the complaints. But um, but if you, if you cannot manage, listen, this comes from the top. How your staff behave comes from the top. So I have absolutely no sympathy 
for Politico and the staff revolt that they're experiencing, they should have made it very clear that they will not deplatform people from other sides, that they will publish pieces from people they disagree with. And that's part of the deal when you sign up. And if the staff gets any message today other than you don't always get to cancel the things that you don't like, then they're not doing their job and... You know, I don't really think Politico is all that great anyway, but it'll continue to descend into left-wing insanity, and I think we can all probably tell which way this is going to go. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this one. I just thought this was a funny piece. I will link to this Daily Beast article in the description below so you can all enjoy it, and we'll keep an eye on any information that comes out of that staff meeting. I'll be really interested to see how they handle it. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I also... More importantly, hope you'll consider joining my Locals community. Now, Locals is social media for adults. It is a private standalone community that will never be censored, never be banned, and where we as adults can have conversations without having to worry about being banned by Twitter or Facebook or any of those things. My Locals information is literally right below me in this box, kb.locals.com. Locals is free to join. And when you do join it, you do get ad-free videos. All of my videos go up ad-free on Locals and actually tend to get published to Locals ahead of when they make it to my YouTube channel. If you want to chip in a few bucks, though, you access a whole other set of features, including access to this discussion posts, our book clubs, our uh, bi-weekly Zoom calls. We do two Zoom calls a week with the community. Lots of other awesome features. It starts at five bucks a month, so really affordable for everyone. And it is that five dollars a month that keeps the trolls out, that keeps the nonsense out. I swear this is the only sane place on the Internet, and it is the only place that right now I feel completely comfortable I will not be deplatformed from at a moment's notice. So I hope you will enjoy will join me uh, in my locals. Lots of other content creators are on locals. It's going to be a, a really important place to be moving forward. So kb.locals.com, I hope to see you there. That's all I've got for right now. I'll see you soon.